Alright, open the door. There's kids in here. The initiate closest to the door whips his head up to look at you. He takes a stuttered step backwards in alarm, then opens his mouth to cry for help. You don't want to do that. Glory looks deep into the initiate's eyes, transfixing him. We're not here to hurt you. Etiquette Street. If we wanted to kill you, you'd already be dead. You lived on the street, you know how this works. Alright, we don't have street etiquette. We're friends of Harrow's. Don't bother calling Marta out here. We're just going in there to have a word with her. <laughs> Do you think they're that dumb? Do you really think that you can get to that door before I can get to you? How dumb are they? How dumb do we think that? Because these are street kids, they're out of their element. They don't know. Alright, let's try to bluff them. The initiate opens his... The initiate eyes you nervously. He gaze, his gaze flits to glory, then falls to her cyber limbs. He swallows. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. He takes a step back. You do that. <laughs> Get bluffed. Alright, female initiate. The initiate by the door is staring at Glory's limbs, her eyes wide. She has a, she's a mousy little thing, probably somewhere in the vicinity of 17 years old. With purple contact lenses and a shock of blue hair, she glances up at Glory, blinking. You used to live here, didn't you? I've seen your picture before. <laughs> Glory's expression remains neutral, really. I think so. I didn't look at it long. It was in a room that I wasn't supposed to be in, but I'm pretty sure that it was you. It probably was. You're right. I did live here a long time ago. I was like you back then, a scared kid, brought here by Marta for a second chance for a chance at a new life. I like Marta, she's so nice. I always feel safe when I'm with her. Most adults aren't like that. They either don't notice you or they do for the wrong reasons, but Marta, she cares about us. There's a long pause, and then the initiate looks to you. Screwing up her courage, she speaks. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead, ask away. Well, I overheard Martha talking with Mr. Harrow yesterday. I think that they were talking about our meeting with him, the one that Martha was just about, was just telling us about, where we will learn to see the world in a different way. Go on. Well, I couldn't really hear the whole conversation. It was all muffled, but what I could hear was kind of weird. Mr. Harrow said some stuff about a shrine, and then it sounded like he changed the subject because he started talking about dinner. Something about chopping up meat. <laughs> You're the meat, lady. Well, Martha got real upset, said they're too new, they're not ready. Make the older ones do it. Stuff like that. But then Mr. Harrow said some other things, and then she calmed down again. When she left, she was smiling. <laughs> And so I was just wondering, do you know what they were talking about? I want to make sure that Martha is okay, but I can't ask her about it because I don't want her to find out that I was eavesdropping. Uh, I think that I know what Harold has planned for you. Have you ever opened the fridge in the other room? <laughs> no, why? Is that where we're gonna make dinner? Glory cuts in, her voice is gentle. I wouldn't worry about it. We'll make sure that Marta is okay. <laughs> Alright, Glory. <laughs> oh no, Glory is a nicer person than I am. Oh, Glory, okay, okay, uh, we won't. Alright, fine, fine. Alright, but don't tell her that I told you, please. Don't worry, we won't. How long have you been here, by the way? Almost a week. She shuffles her feet. Eventually, she looks up with a small smile. It's wonderful. Of course it is. So much nicer than living on the street, isn't it? Glory's face is kind, but her tone is one of incredible sorrow. You be good, sweetie. Don't you worry. We'll take care of Marta. The girl smiles sheepishly, sheepishly and steps back. As you pass by her on your way to the door, Glory shoots you a sidelong glance. It's like I thought. Things have changed in the past few years. How so? Back when I lived here, Harold would never let such a fresh convert prepare a sacrifice. 
He'd wait until she was in so deep, until she felt so indebted to him that she couldn't turn tail and run. It was a rule. You let newcomers get settled for a month, maybe two, before teaching them the more unsavory aspects of cult life. Even then, you start them off slow. Their first lessons would use pork or chicken, never human meat. That didn't come until much later. Indoctrinating a new recruit after a week is risky as hell, and he never would have done it when I lived here. Uh, maybe he's getting cocky? The shrine, he's using it to brainwash the initiates faster than he used to. She nods. That's what I'm thinking. Harold's getting lazy, letting his captive spirit do the heavy lifting for him. What does that mean for us? It means that once we break the spirit's hold on the people, they're gonna turn on him. Because these guys, they're not really into it, right? So he's relying completely on the spirit to do the, the mind control. And so once the spirit lets go, the mind control is gone and there's nothing holding them here. I'm still working on that, but I don't think that the shrine is just a tool for Harrow anymore. I think that he relies on it. He's using it as a crutch. Yeah. Yeah. Everything falls apart once we take away the shrine. She cocks her head slightly, a thoughtful expression on her face. I think that he's left him, he's let himself become dependent on the damn thing. That girl's never gonna have to do what we saw back in the kitchen. We won't let that happen. That's not important. Good, if the shrine's influence is the only thing keeping the kids here, that'll make our jobs a lot easier. She nods, a fierce look in her eye. On that, we are agreed. Alright. Let's say hi to Marta. Marta is just on the other side of this door. However, this goes, we're gonna have to move quickly afterward. If she dies, Harold will know it, and I don't trust her to keep her mouth shut if she lives. So we take the key to the shrine room, break through the ward, and confront the spirit. Are we clear on that? Crystal, let's do this. <laughs> I'll walk in there. The woman in this room is lovely. Full lips contrast awfully with her fine elvish features, and a tumble of fire red hair spills down over her shoulders. Beyond her physical beauty, there's something inherently approachable about her. She exudes an almost palpable aura of kindness and warmth. Marta, Glory's old lover, the lure that Harold used to draw her and so many others to fuel Stella. She looks up with a start at the sound of your approach. Her eyes go wide at the sight of Glory. As she takes in her cyberware, her mouth falls open in horror. <laughs> Glory? <laughs> Surprise! Yes, Marta, it's me. Glory's voice is cold, it's been a long time. It has. Marta swallows. The horrified look hasn't left her face. Glory, what have you done to yourself? I've transcended. I have become transhuman. <laughs> your flesh is a weakness. Give up your flesh, Marta. Become superior. What I had to do. I got out, Marta. This was the only way. <laughs> oh, Glory. All at once, the horror on Marta's face is replaced with an expression of profound sorrow. I am so, so sorry. Are you? Are you? Do you want to fix things? Marta steps forward, her arms extended to wrap Glory in a hug. All at once, something in Glory's face changes. Her skin goes from pale to pallid, and her breath becomes ragged. She takes a step back and raises her claws in a defensive posture. Her voice frosts over with cold rage. Don't you touch me. You're one, with, you're one of Harrow's creatures, you always were. Martha stops short. One of his creatures? Glory, what are you talking about? I think I say nothing. Keep your cool, Glory. This isn't like you. You aren't fooling anyone. Glory's told me all about you, how you tricked her into coming here. You know what she's talking about, Marta. You ruined her life. We don't entirely trust Glory to have an objective memory of what happened here, right? No, nobody has, like, a perfect memory. It's possible that Marta tells us a different perspective. I'm gonna say nothing. 
You know as well as I do, you worship that monster. You seduced me into coming here so that I would worship him. If you hadn't found me, if you hadn't baited me, none of this would have happened. None of what? I haven't done anything. If you just left me where you found me, I, would, I never would have hurt anybody. My mother would still be alive. I never would have sold my soul to that abomination that you all worship. And I wouldn't have had to sacrifice my own body to escape from it. This place took everything from me. And it all started with you. She looks genuinely hurt. Harold and I rescued you from a life on the street. A beautiful girl, homeless, penniless, living in a gutter. I pulled you away from all that. I saved you. Does Marta, is, is Marta brainwashed? Is she under mind control or does she genuinely believe this? There's a long pause. Glory stares into Marta's eyes. Her expression is unreadable. I don't feel much anymore, Marta. Most of the time, I'm completely numb. But for you, I can make an exception. I hate you. Mm, I'm sorry that you feel that way, Glory. For my part, I still love you. The razors flick out of Glory's fingertips. Her lips curl into a snarl. Another lie. The last one you'll ever tell. Uh... I don't think that she's lying, or at least she doesn't think so. She believes what she's saying. I think that we should hear her out. Something strange is happening here. I don't think that she's lying, or at least she doesn't think so. She believes what she's saying. That's because it's true. I'll prove it to you. Oh yeah, prove it to us. Help us take out Harold. <laughs> If you love her, you will take out Harold for us. <laughs> That's the most toxic thing ever, right? If somebody says, if you love me, just re disregard everything else they say. <laughs> if you love me, you will do this and that. Yeah, no, don't, don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. The words come stammering out of her. Her eyes are fl fixed to Glory's razors. Ask me anything you want. I'll show you that I'm telling the truth. I never wanted anything bad to happen to you, Glory. Not ever. She wheels to face you. Why are you listening to her? She's just telling you what you want to hear. That's her whole purpose here. Remember, she's bait. Why should we listen to anything she has to say? The cultists aren't responsible for their actions, remember. That's as true for Martha as it is for everyone else. Knowing how the shrine is affecting her mind might help us, Glory. I don't trust her either. I just want to hear how she's going to try to worm her way out of this. Knowing how the shrine is affecting her mind might help us, Glory. She fumes at you, but only for a moment. You might be right. Uh -huh. Martha looks from you to Glory, a confused expression on her face. Her voice goes quiet. There's nothing wrong with my mind, Glory. I don't even understand what you two are talking about. <laughs> Why don't you show us the shrine, Marta? Can you get us into the shrine? Let's, let's, let's look at the shrine together, you and I, and Glory. No, of course you don't. She fidgets in agitation. I understand your interest in learning more about this, SCKC, but we're wasting time, and we need that key. If Harold gets back here before we've dealt with that shrine, we're fucked. Street etiquette, I've spent enough time on the street to learn how to read a person, and I'm telling you, Martha loves those kids. <laughs> I want to know everything we can about this place. If she wants to talk, let her. I didn't turn my back on you, Glory. You shouldn't turn your back on her. You need to hear what she has to say. If you don't, this is going to annoy you for the rest of your life. You're right, we don't have time for this, Martha. We need your key in to the shrine room. Don't make us take it by force. You need to hear what she has to say. If you don't, it's gonna annoy you for the rest of your life. No, I don't think so. Her frown turns into a snarl. What would annoy me is knowing that this bitch is still alive, still hurting innocent kids, still too blind to see Harold for what she really is. For what he really is. Uh oh.
As you watch, the hope dies from Marta's eyes. All that you can read in her expression is pain. She swallows hard and exhales, opens her mouth to speak. Then that strange whispering noise fills the back of your skull again, and the muscles of her face relax. Alright, Glory, I didn't want this, but you win. Her hands begin to glow. Let me show you what our husband has taught me once since you disappeared. Really? Oh, what? Can I... Damn it, I want to hear her talk about this before killing her. Alright, never mind. No, I want to I wanna try this again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this. I'm going to try this again. Like... Damn it. Alright, I'm trying this again. Alright. Blah, 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 blah. Say nothing. Blah, 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 blah. 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 